real note, everybody, man, everybody, man, um, take a moment of silence, man. Everyone take a moment of silence, man. Everybody be quiet for a minute, man. Michael Brown will be 28 today. Today's Michael Brown's 28th birthday. He will be 28 today. Or what if it would have been Michael Brown's 28th birthday? Social media saw a significant debate regarding his commemoration. While some commemorated him as a victim of police violence and systemic racism, others criticized those commemorations, arguing that Brown's actions lead, led, leading to his death, including an, a robbery and an altercation with a police officer, justified the use of force. The online discussion highlighted ongoing tensions and differing perspectives on police, accountability, racial profiling, and the use of force in law enforcement. <laughs> the use of force. <laughs> um. Michael Brown should have turned 28 years old. The last birthday he celebrated and will ever get to celebrate was his 18th. Just 81 days after his 18th birthday, a Ferguson police officer killed him. In a just world, Mike Brown would be with his loved ones right now, celebrating another year, dreaming of his future as he blows out the candles on his birthday cake. But instead, we are only left with the memories of who he was. Michael Brown's life. What do you mean? We're me we didn't give a fuck about him. We didn't know this cat till y'all fucking told us to care about him. We didn't know this cat. They acting like we, they act like he was like a public figure or something. They acted like he was a public figure. We didn't know this cat till y'all told us that he was the next BLM poster child. But instead, we are only left with the memories of who he was. Michael Brown's life was taken. It was taken from his mom, his dad, his friends, his siblings, his classmates, and from every person who knew and loved him. They were all left to live through the trauma police violence leaves in its wake. They were forced to go to school, to go to work, go get groceries and live their lives after knowing someone they loved was killed. And they were uh ma'am uh there's a lot of people in blackistan especially in your city st louis going through that same thing woman a lot of them more than any other group by far 10 times more 15 20 times more than any other group what are you talking about woman groceries and live their lives after knowing someone they loved was killed and they were forced to deal with the mental health effects of it on their own police killings of unarmed black people are responsible for more than 50 million additional days of poor mental health days per year what did she just say hold on tell me if you can follow this what did this woman just say responsible for more than 50 million additional days of poor mental police killings of unarmed black people are responsible for more than 50 million additional days of poor mental health days per year it's devastating our communities and it must be addressed that's why in mike brown's honor alongside mike's mother leslie mcspadden i am reintroducing the helping families heal act also known as the mike brown bill this legislation will provide crucial mental health support for victims, families, and communities harmed by police violence. It would fund these resources and bolster... What about people just harmed by sun violence? What if they've just been harmed by sun violence from residents of your congressional district? The Black people in there, what if they were just harmed by them? Do they get a... 
special program. Their counseling in our schools. It's been nearly 10 years since the Ferguson uprising. 10 years since our movement for justice birthed an affirmative vision of community safety that focuses on saving lives instead of destroying them. That's why in addition to helping families heal, we're working to pass My People's Response Act, which would advance an evidence-based public health approach to safety and so many other life-saving policies. Almost a decade has passed since we lost Mike Brown, but we're still on the front lines of the movement to save black lives. And that's where we will remain until no- She says, this woman says she's on the front line of the movement to save black lives. <laughs> well, I mean, you're the Congresswoman from St. Louis. So yeah, there's a bunch of dead black people in St. Louis every year. Um, what's your what's your opinion on that, sister? About the black people that were killed in St. Louis by the black people. No more lives are taken by police violence, and our children can celebrate each and every one of their birthdays. Happy birthday, Mike Brown! Rest in power. Seven thousand comments. So let's read the comments. <laughs> okay, this is obviously a, a gladder site, a white site, because there none of them are. <laughs> This is moments before Mike Brown was killed when he assaulted the Indian store owner. Um, you know, it is what it is. Um, uh, wow. Michael Brown. So this is the incident at the store. This guy's crazy trying to stop Michael Brown from leaving. You gonna stop? You gonna stop a, a big man like that from leaving? Let him leave, man. I tell you guys, man. Always let them leave. It's a good idea to reach. It might be Mike Brown if. Okay. So here we go. Number one. If you think it's a good idea to reach for a cop's gun for street cred, you might be Mike Brown. If you think. If you assault a convenience store owner uh, for, and steal a box of cigars and you can dismiss it as a cultural thing, you might be Mike Brown. Here we go. If you're a 6'4", 300 pound, fully grown man and the mainstream media refers to you as a little boy, you might be Mike Brown. That's a good idea. You might tell a quick call. If people get really sad when they heard you died, and the way they mourn your passing is by destroying convenience stores? You might be Mike Brown. <laughs> might be Mike Brown. <laughs> That's one brave glider, man. This is one brave glider. That's one brave glider. Everyone smash the like button. Everyone who's in here right now on it on any platform, please smash the like button. The graduation picture.
So today will be Mike Brown's This BLM shit was disgusting. Mark Lamont Hill, man. This BLM shit was completely disgusting. It was disgusting. You go from here, you got to change the strategy. You see what I'm saying? If you want a different result, you got to change the way you approach that, that yeah. problem. At the root of this situation, a lot of our support should have been directed and only directed to the front to the Brown family and yeah. support because at the end of the day, they lost the son. Yeah, okay. Um, how we were able to organize and con come together, uh, we're able to take our voices and put them online, and somebody in China can hear what we're saying. And I think it's a it's big now, opposed to 20, 30 years ago when. If something happened in your town, you could cover it up. But now we can take pictures. We're the paparazzi. We can put it out there when there's injustice being done. Ask you, you know, what type of person was he be before all of this? He was my baby. My firstborn. Courageous, outgoing. He just loved people, loved animals. Southspoken. He just made people draw to him. So Michael Brown was a soft smoking person that made people draw to him. Getting to some of this fuckery, man. It was a very, very violent weekend, man. Um, how many likes we got, man? We're not doing too good on the likes, man. The last few days, man. We're not doing too good on the likes, man. Um, let's see. One ninety-two. All right, let's just go to two hundred. We got 200, man. Let's let's just do 200, man. I'm going to drop the link, man. Everyone support the channel via PayPal, Cash App, or the Super Chat. Please support the channel. Please hit the link. Please hit the PayPal, Cash App, or Super Chat link. I'm dog tired, as you guys can see tonight, man. It, it's, it caught up with me of them, all them days, that day I didn't sleep. That day I pulled that all nighter when I couldn't figure out how what was wrong with the live stream. Now I'm fucking tired as shit, man. I'm dog tired right now, man. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. But the show must go on, man. The show must go on. We must. We must. Show what's going on in this country, man. We must expose what's going on in this country. We must expose what's going on in this country, man. Um, Salute, salute. What's happening? Yo, what's popping, OG? I ain't shit, man. Just hanging, man. Um, let me see. Oh, oh yeah. Well, yeah. I'm so tired, man. It doesn't make any sense, man. Um. I'm so tired it doesn't make any sense. Um, let's see. WUSA 9 News at 5 begins right now with some breaking news. An off-duty D.C. police officer on his way to work 
was hurt when someone shot at his car in Brightwood. Now, that officer is wow. expected to be okay. Not long after, two suspects were arrested in Prince George's County, Maryland. Police say they were pursuing this blue sedan right here in connection to that D.C. shooting when it crashed in Landover. Thank you for being here with us tonight at 5. I'm Lorenzo Hall. And I'm Leslie Foster. We have live team coverage of what happened in Northwest D.C. and in Maryland this afternoon. Yeah, Rafael Sanchez-Cruz is live in Landover tonight. He has more on how this wild police chase came to an end. Yeah, but we're going to start with our Delia Gonzalez live in Brightwood, where all this started around lunchtime today. And, D, police say this real-time crime center that we've talked about consistently lately has helped to locate the suspect. Wow. Police are certainly saying that we are seeing the proof of the investment with this real-time crime center. They were able to capture the two suspects in just about an hour after it all happened here on this very quiet block in Northwest 7th and Oglethorpe. Neighbors say this never happens here. We hear that a lot, but this is a quiet block here in Northwest. Now, we can tell you the chief not only crediting the real-time crime center, but uh, the surveillance cameras from the community and the officer's quick thinking. He was able to capture the suspect's partial license plate after he was shot during his afternoon commute. An officer's commute to work interrupted by gunfire. I was on the phone talking to a friend of mine and uh, I said, him, that sound like gunshots. DC police say the 18 year captain driving his personal car and in plain clothes spotted a vehicle driving erratically in front of him at 7th and Oglethorpe Streets Northwest around noontime. The suspects in the vehicle stopped the car very abruptly, got out of the car and fired at our officer. That's what I don't so they didn't know he was an officer. He spotted a car driving erratically. He probably maybe honked the horn at them or probably, um, I don't know, he did something. Because listen, for them to cop out the car and start shooting they didn't know that they, they they first they didn't know he was a cop but second of all there had been some kind of exchange of eye contact or they must have looked back and seen him like visibly mad in the side of his car or yelled something out the window you know something like that yeah some one of those um those sun man aggressions bro yeah, he um they, they just got out and started dumping. Your captain driving his personal car and in plain clothes spotted a vehicle driving erratically in front of him at 7th and Oglethorpe Streets Northwest around noontime. The suspects in the vehicle stopped the car very abruptly, got out of the car and fired at our officer. That's what I don't understand. Why? What was he a victim? Did they know him? I mean, why would they why did they target him? The officer radioed in the shooting, took the partial license plate of the suspect's car and then drove himself the quarter mile to the 4th District Station. Our crew capturing the black SUV parked on the grass outside the Georgia Avenue Police Station we could make out two bullet holes, one in the back passenger door, the other the front passenger window. As soon as the partial plate information came out, a real-time crime center um, pushed out a notification of the vehicle and the plate. Um, our Falcon and our officers began to ca canvas the area. Man, this is not good. It's not a good look. Well, uh, how Black call it the Dark Bud Dynasty? So for, uh... <laughs> God, dog. I like the chocolate ones though. Sometimes I, no, I, I like them. I, I don't have any problem with them. I at all. I, I like them better than the red bones. Sometimes, sometimes they. I don't know about that. No, 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 no. See, I mean, red bones like me. So it's like I just be like, you know what I'm saying. So, but but like the dark skin joints, like I, I, they be prettier to me when they're pretty. When they pretty, they prettier than the red bone joints. The red bone joints is like. Is like um I don't know, it's like you supposed to be with one. Like it's kind of like they think they think like you know what I'm saying? It's like they born like red bone joints is like vanilla ice cream and shit. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's, they just status quo type bitches, man. But um don't get me wrong, man, they be fine, but the the, the, the fine ass dark skinned ones, y'all probably never had like a fine dark skin. I had okay brown skin one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You ain't never had to find dark skin joe. I done had some fine dark skin joe. Them 
Go my phone, my nigga. Now, old girl, that you you told me, uh, Mandizi. Oh no, Yandy, Yandy. Yeah, yeah you. I, I never had one of those. I'm talking about better than Yandy, man. Yeah, better than Yandy, man. Yeah, man, way better than Yandy. Now, Yandy got a little. She got a little cushion back there, but I'm talking about better than Yandy, man. Look at this shit show, man. Um.